And alrighty, I am back. Um, we are going to be doing another kiosk review in this crappy spot again. Um, it's the best I got for now. So this um, this kiosk review is a bit of an interesting one. I actually cannot find these kiosks anywhere. And when I say I can't find them anywhere, I mean like I've looked. I mean, maybe they've come up in the past two days. I don't know. But when I bought this, the seller was actually selling this particular kiosk and another variant of the kiosk. I opted for this one because it was smaller. Uh, and then the variant disappeared and the seller disappeared. Uh, it was one of those um, moments that I, I got it because you can't really find these things anywhere. It's like, it's super rare. And I mean, most of the people who have these things, they aren't posting it, which is very frustrating with me. I know a lot of people don't aren't really into videos or, or aren't really into like posting their collection. But like pictures, I guess I'm, I put it this way, I guess I'm not one to be on forums um, to look up all this stuff. I just go on YouTube to find these things. And maybe like I'm not on the right forum to find some of these kiosks that these people have. But the kiosk I'm about to show you, I know very little information about um, besides what is shown and what I can speculate. But besides that, I know very little information about it. So um, without killing your guys this time and without further ado... I'm going to bring the kiosk into the shop. All right. I totally have to bring this tripod further out than I wanted it to be. But this is what we're looking at here. We're looking at a Nokia N-Gage kiosk. It's not plugged in um, at this particular moment. Uh, there are reasons to why I didn't plug it in immediately. Um, because once this kiosk plugs in, it's automatically turned on. So let's actually take a look here. So this kiosk here, um, it's a very, very unique kiosk. Um, if someone finds one of these and can get me more information about it, I'd be very happy. I actually, to be completely honest, I don't even think I know the the model information on this kiosk. Probably not. All right, so let's get started with this kiosk. Um, obviously, it was it's apparent that this kiosk was um, released around the time of the Engage QD and not the original Engage. Or it could have been an original Engage kiosk and they converted it. As you can see, this bracket on this here, this is uh, probably, you can probably get one for the original Engage. Uh, singular logo down at the bottom, which you can't really see. Let me see if I can angle this. Yep. So you see that singular logo there. Um, that's around when singular was around before they got absorbed by AT&T. Um, there we go. Here's a better, better pick or a better video. Uh, that option. I didn't realize it was zoomed in that much. Um, but for the most part, basically what this kiosk does is it has a demo game in there. Um, when this plugs in, it's a special Engage kiosk. So why is it special? It's special because one, the actual console does not power without being plugged into an outlet. Um, also, it's special. You can't do any other functions. You can't make calls. Um, you can only play games on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug this in. I'm going to jump cut to it plugged in. Um, hopefully we get some power. I haven't used this kiosk in a while. Uh, like most of my kiosks, this one in particular has collected dust um, for reasons which I'll explain uh, a little bit later. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Before I plug it in, though, I'm going to go around what you're seeing on the kiosk. So what you're seeing here, obviously this is the uh, kiosk itself. This big thing, which looks like a uh, like Wi-Fi, like not a Wi-Fi, but like network um, type of antenna cover, that actually is where the uh, the charge cable is housed. So the charge cable comes up from here, and then when it goes through this piece here, which you can kind of see here, um, yeah, you can definitely see that. Okay, so um, when that comes up through there, it goes up through here. And then the charge port, if you, ever, if you guys ever had an N-Gage, is on the direct top. So to put it in this motion, it actually has to go up to the top and it has to go in. And this covers to, to basically cover that. Because like I said, this only works on power. So if you unplug it from power, it does not work. So this is to prevent people from plugging it or, or um, taking it out, uh, preventing the console from working. I don't understand why they didn't just make like a special uh, charger that was like a left, an L-shaped charger. That way this wouldn't have to be here. But... I digress. I didn't make this. Um, on this side, there is a sign basically telling you to sign up for um, uh, sign up today for Engage Arena, which was their online gaming service. 
uh, to play each other. This is all speculation. I'm pretty sure that one is correct, though, but I don't know if I'm 100% correct. So, for people who hadn't engaged, um, just post in the comments exactly what Engage Arena was, because information is pretty scarce on that. So, let me know exactly what Engage Arena was um, and what it allowed you to do. So, we had Singular Media Works Package, probably one of their plans. And then on this side here, um, we've got Engage QD Features. So basically it talks about downloadable applications, uh, Bluetooth, uh, Engage Arena, like I said in the comments, let me know. Uh, color screen with graphics, wireless internet, POP3 email, um, hot swappable games, MMC. Uh, so that was a big thing getting into that. Um, with the older model of the Engage, you could not hot swap games. The game slot, which was MMC, the newer version of MMC, by the way, is SD card. Could be 100% wrong on that, but correct me, or it's a similar type of SD card. Um, but original console, original uh, Engage, you had to take the battery cover off, then you had to take the battery out in order to access the cartridge slot. And that was one of the many gripes that a lot of people had with the original Engage was the fact that uh, you could not take the cartridge out without turning the system off. Then again, when you think about it 100%, the N-Gage, even though it was a game, quote-unquote, console, um, it was also mainly a phone. So a lot of phones back then, to access certain things, like the SIM card and all of that, you had to actually take the battery out of the phone. Nowadays, phones are a little bit simpler, where you don't have to take the battery out to take the SIM card out. Uh, some phones will actually restart when you take the SIM card out, but it's not necessarily what happens. This model here actually had an MMC card slot on the outside, so you didn't have to go about taking the whole battery pack out just to um, actually put a game in. So I don't remember what game is in here, but like I said, I'll go ahead, I'll put this in, and then I'll be right back. All right, so we've got this plugged in and powering on. Um, I am actually gonna give it a minute because uh, when this thing powers on, either there's no backlight to this or when this thing powers on, the backlight is pretty crappy. Um, it takes a full minute to power on. It boots up to the Nokia logo and then it takes its time uh, powering up, so I will come back when it's fully powered up. All right, so we've got this thing fully up and booted. So now we're presented with the screen that says uh, game demonstration unit only. So I'm actually going to zoom into that and we'll take a look at what I was talking about earlier. All right, so now we're back. We are presented, whoops, sorry about that. We're presented with this screen here that says for demonstration, oh, oh, game demonstration unit only. And pretty much all these other menu features are disabled here. So if we go through and press things like, hmm, which one? So if we, dial, we try and dial numbers, let's say, um, it won't allow us to actually call those numbers. And... I'm not at oh, the call button's on this side. So if we press that, it'll say game demonstration device, call's not allowed. So that's pretty much all this thing does. It doesn't really, it allows you to access the menu, but you can't really do um, like calling functions or anything like that. It's just basically to play the game. So if we launch the game here, it'll launch whatever demo game is in here. I have a couple of demo games. This one happens to be Ghost Recon. So we'll wait for that to start up. There we go. So a lot of these are like mobile games from this, this era of um, mobile gaming. So like this is truly like how a mobile game would look on a mobile device, essentially. This device is just built to handle it much differently. So I don't have a profile to load, and I kind of don't want to set up a profile, uh, mainly because this is a, more about the actual kiosk. So we'll go into some more things on the kiosk, and then I'll kind of give you my um, my idea of what I think about this, um, and if it's a good kiosk or not. So uh, we'll be back in a minute. All right, so before I actually go into that, I forgot to re mention, excuse me, that this has demo footage. So I wanted to show a little bit of that because I was talking about how mobile games were back in this time. And this is pretty much a perfect example of that. Not a lot of phones, I don't know if a lot of phones were able to process games like this, but this is pretty much uh, an example of what mobile games look like from this time.
All right, so now that this thing is unplugged and powered off, I can give you my honest opinion about this. So this is supposed to be, I can assume from how the bottom looks, it's supposed to be designed like an arena. Um, the cool thing about this is, this is at least the first kiosk that I've seen um, that has suction cups on the bottom. So I'm gonna explain to you how this whole wire management works. I talked to you about how it comes through here and goes up here. Um, on the bottom of the base here, um, you can see how there is a tether there. That's a ground um, to ground the actual base here where this wire is coming in from. And then the wire runs from the bottom here and it goes actually into um, around this side. And this side here, you see where this, um, I forgot what you call it. Um, you see where the zip tie is? This zip tie actually holds the charger in place. And then on the back here, which I can easily unscrew here. These are two thumb screws. I'm assuming to replace the charger or if uh, the actual supply goes wrong. So if you look in here, how this is pretty much uh, works. Let me zoom in there real quick so you can see it. There is the actual N-Gage uh, pow um, power adapter here, like a standard N-Gage power adapter. And then you have the wire running from there to an extension. So it's a pretty basic setup. All right, now back to what I was saying before. This kind of looks more like um, an arena, I guess, to represent Engage Arena. That, I mean, that's what it looks like in my personal opinion. Um, it could be 100% rolled. Uh, someone may interpret it as something else. So my thoughts on this. Um, for starters, I like how the display looks. Um, I like how... Um, I just like the design of it, the fact that it looks like an arena. Like I said, that could just be my personal opinion. Uh, to take this apart is very easy and very simple. So um, that is also another big thing. And one of the biggest things about this, which I like the most, so you see how it talks about like games here. So if you have N-Gage games, you can actually swap them out. And you can actually use this by itself, but you need to plug it in, obviously, as I mentioned earlier. But the fact that the games are interchangeable, um, it just adds more to this because you're not stuck with one game that's in there. It's not locked to demo games. Uh, I have a lot of demo games for this, but it's not locked to those specific games. You can just go out and get an Engage card online or wherever you would get an Engage card in today's day and age, and you'll be able to play it on here. Um, the good news also is that this is a QD. So if you do decide to unscrew this and get the console out, you like I said, you don't have to go and take out the battery, take out the battery just to access this. Um, so that's another thing about this. But overall, I mean, this is a good kiosk. Uh, like I said, you can do more with it than you can with uh, some kiosks that restrict and lock things so many so so down. I mean, you wouldn't really make a call with this, obviously. Um, and if you wanted to, you wouldn't be really looking for a kiosk. This is more for collecting. But the fact that you can change games, um, the fact that you can take the console out, which most kiosks can do, but the fact that you can actually plug it in and use it, um, that speaks a lot for this console. Um, like I said, the only downside is the fact that it has to be plugged in to be used. But if you think about it, it's a, it's a kiosk. So like you wouldn't be using it outside of the kiosk. If you wanted that type of feature, you would go for a regular N-Gage. Um, also, as I mentioned earlier, I haven't seen a lot of these or if any of these at all out there on the web. So if I can get more information about it, maybe about, about its release, um, this seems to be removable, so probably other companies got it as well. I don't necessarily know. However, I'm highly doubting that, and I think that Singular is the one that actually was the only carrier. But give me some more Engage facts in the comments um, if you know anything about this kiosk, if you've seen it before, if you've seen any other variants that um, that are out there or that, is, that are being sold, let me know. I'd like to take a look at them. Uh, once again, if you liked, you can like the video. If you disliked it, you can dislike the video. Let me know why you disliked it or why you liked it. Um, please be active in the comments and please subscribe if you want to see more.